Um, so, welcome back. Oh no, wait. Let me let me rephrase that. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good way. <laughs> what I heard a couple of weeks ago, I saw the Instagram post, uh, and the internet melted down. Something about a new Alexis on Fire something, mm -hmm. and it turns out that you have a new song, which we'll get to in just a minute. But the fact is, we have Alexis on Fire. Mm -hmm. What? Why? What happened? Well, uh, we we've been you know playing here and there for the last couple of years again, uh, which I think that all started just based on the fact that we that we were. We were all still close. We all still enjoyed playing with each other. Um, I think it started with we got one show offer a couple of years ago, and it was just like we were all available to do it. And um, that's where it kind of started. Obviously, we had gone through the whole farewell thing, and I think we turned some stuff down too. There was yeah. some, there were some opportunities that came about that we kind of decided like. I think for a while there, I was holding our breakup quite closely to the chest. Like mm -hmm. I really liked it. I yeah. thought we broke up classily and like yeah. and and then it seemed it seemed like coming back would undo that. So there was there was like some time there where we were turning down offers and we were like no, we're done. Yeah. And then uh and then I think it was just like the the changing of the guard. You'd see the pressure from people, you'd see that they clearly wanted it and um you know, we all these offers came in to play these shows and I was just like why am I doing this? Why am I holding yeah. this so closely and like why am I why is it so precious that we broke up? I mean, uh, we all clearly still like each other, and like, there's no animosity, um, and we've all kind of landed firmly on our, you know, like, we've, I think it was important for us to kind of step away from the band for a while too, like, uh, you know, we were raised by that band. Grow up, gr I would like Alexis on Fire was like pretty much from high school until throughout our formative years. Mm -hmm. So just became there became no excuse for us to not play. Yeah. That's really what it was, you know. We we decided to play one show, and we played the show and played really well. So there was there was really no excuse for us to to not be playing. Like we 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 thought we were, you know, what I mean, if we had played that show, and we didn't talk to each other, and we didn't play very well, and we got a paycheck and we left, we wouldn't have done anything else. I know for sure I wouldn't have. But we played. We felt good about it. And then, you know, a couple of years went by where we were like, well, we'll go to Australia and do a tour. Sort of became like a vacation, in a way, where we would just meet and do this thing that we all love doing still. And then, uh, probably around the summer of last year, was I moved back to Toronto full time. Where were you? I, I had a house in Nashville for four years, and I spent most of my time off the road there. So I think maybe like just all of us being closer, we just decided to start having more like a regular kind of band practice here and there which then led to us deciding to start trying to, you know, we're like, if we're going to keep playing these shows sporadically, let's see if we can write let's a, do something write more a few, than yeah. nothing. Yeah. Write well, a yeah, few like, <laughs> you could have just wrote it out playing show after show after show. Yeah. Like the who or the stones or somebody. Yeah. But at what point did you decide? I like to think of us as like the who or the stones. I think, I think we're, yeah, uh, yeah, clearly, no. clearly, no. If you, you know, maybe you know. a little bit up from there. No. But at what no. point did you decide that it was okay, if we're going to do this, Let's just be honest and start writing some songs. I think we both. I think we're all still quite current. I think. I think it's. I've seen it before where musicians they get a certain degree of popularity and then they just they just fall off the planet. They don't. Un, they don't pay attention anymore. They don't know things that are going on and they and they kind of lose touch with what's going on. I feel like we are capable of contributing still, mm -hmm. and I think that. You know, if anything, we've gotten better at writing and better at listening to music. So, uh, yeah, why? What would stop us from doing that? Yeah. And also, but also, yes, I, I don't think I want. I don't want to play in a nostalgia act. I don't want to go out and just play the greatest hits all the time. I mean, it's, it, it is a lot of fun to do it, but I do feel like we can contribute to the current. Well, if you're going to be a working music. musician. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to have new stuff to to offer, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's I, I'm I've always been a proponent of that you know like even with what my solo stuff like I constantly am trying to write new songs and constantly like trying to make music because you've been giving the up being given the opportunity to create why would I not 
you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Think about all the people who've never been given that chance or don't have the ability to, or, you know, you just, you're just going to sit there and bank off of one popular song or, so for us, it was like, obviously it took a couple of years of us sort of playing here and there and it just being this thing. But then last year with more time to think about it and to put to it, it was like, well, let's just start trying to write. So that's what this song that we're releasing is our first, George put it, I think perfectly in our, our new kind of the statement it was, it's our first releasable effort. And wait, first releasable effort. Yeah. Like we, we of, all the, of all the new ideas that we've got going. And for us, not we don't have to answer to anyone anymore. You know, 2019, we can do whatever we want, especially with the way music is digested nowadays by people. So we just kind of thought, we wrote this song. We think it's really good. We went and recorded it. We're putting it out, and we're going to just keep doing that until, you know, yeah, until yeah. the cows come. <laughs> yeah, oh. until, we, until we don't want to. Okay, yeah, this is yeah. the song is called Familiar Drugs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it an indication of or uh, that more stuff is coming? Yeah, I believe so. I think more stuff is coming because uh, when we were at practice the other day, we wrote an, we wrote more songs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I think more stuff's coming. I don't I don't know what it is yet. I don't know if it's just another single or an EP or an album. We don't have that's not necessarily drawn up. But I can say this: when we do practice once in a while, like uh, it's hard to align all of our schedules. But when we do practice, it is absolutely productive mm -hmm. i feel like a lot gets done and there's a lot in the bank if we can yeah i don't know so it's uh well, yeah. when you guys first started the whole idea was you put together 12 songs on an album you release a single six weeks ahead of the album mm -hmm. and then you go through the whole marketing cycle for this album today what uh, 17 years later whatever it is you can be like Drake or Arkells, where you just kind of drip songs out, yeah. bit by bit by bit, to keep the audience happy, to keep you top of mind with the people that love what you do. Yeah, I think too, like George said, with our, you know, when we first started the band, it was the only thing that we had in our lives, and it became all encompassing. We lived, we breathed it, you know, we spent almost all of our years just in a van or in a bus doing that. It's not that anymore, you know, this many years later, but we still have it in our lives. So for us to, for us to make a full record now, it would take all of us making it every, everything we have in our lives now, which I don't know if any of us, A, have the ability to do that <laughs> or really want to. I think we are in a very happy place where we are. We, we're very lucky and, and, and happy to be able to still have this thing that we love and do. But I don't think any of us are are interested in letting it uh, create any burden or pressure on ourselves. We just are just so stoked to be able to do it. So that's why we thought, you know what, this song's good. We feel good about it. We could wait and try to write ten more songs, which will take who knows how long, and then go and record a record. But we have this song. We think it's good. We can put it out ourselves. We're going to do that. It's a fantastic position to be in, isn't I, it? I think so, <laughs> pretty, too. Yeah. It's pretty slick, Alan. And yeah. I think the song's really good. Like we, we feel like this is a perfect song to have come out after our not putting out new music in almost a decade. We think we're all happy with the tune. And was it? What was the last album? Was it The Dog's Blood, Dog's Blood EP, which yeah. came out in yeah. 2010, but we recorded it in 2009. So. Yeah, but you know, weirdly enough, it almost seems like you guys haven't really gone away because of those sporadic shows every once in a while. Yeah, I mean that's that's very nice. Like that's I think that's what's uh, when we first started playing, and that was the most surprising thing was how um, how excited everybody seemed to still be to oh, like, come and hang out at the shows with us. You know, so I think every time we do anything, I'm expecting this like it to fall flat. Like, oh yeah, we're selling, we're playing at the Enormo Dome, and I'm just like sheer anxiety. I'm like, there's nobody, like nobody's gonna come. We we haven't played in ten years, yeah. and then it's like sold out immediately, and like you know, and people go nuts or whatever. We we put out a record or we do a re-release, re it sells out instantly. Like, no, the 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 people, it's uh, it becomes obvious that people are still ravenous for it they still want it so yeah. yeah i don't know all right that being said what's coming up for the rest of 2019 well we're gonna put this song out we're gonna play some shows in the summer we're gonna keep working on the rest of the songs that we're that we're working on we've got a couple that are kind of recorded kind of not like we went into the studio uh, in december to with the goal to get this this song recorded and ended up starting some other ones and so I think we're just going to try to keep this process going. We're going to play some shows and keep jamming and keep 
writing and recording. Like I said, I have this space where we can kind of, you know, I have the keys, yeah. which is nice, and we can kind of just make music in there when we want. And I think being able, being a little bit more um, uh, learned in the art of making a record as well, like we can kind of do it ourselves. Like we, we just went into a studio with our friend Carl, who, who's been with us forever, and we just recorded it ourselves, you know, as opposed to when we were younger, we didn't know what to do, and we had yeah, to get a producer. Yeah, totally relying on someone else to do it. So we can us, kind of just sort of, I think for this year, we're going to just kind of keep keep with this this model. And there won't be a, another farewell show for quite some time. I don't think there ever will be one. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't think that <laughs> would be... Hey, you, Pete Townsend, that would yeah. be and, hard. and Ozzy Osbourne have learned, don't ever say yeah. that it's the last show. Well, to be, you know what, to be hey, fair, it though... Was it was the last it, show, man. And it was, it <laughs> like, was the last show of that version of us. It really was. It was... Um, I think we needed, like George said, I, I know I did specifically, but I think we all needed to take a break from it. So it didn't get us to the point where we were at each other's throats and never wanted to speak to each other again. Because people don't, a lot of people, and I'm not saying woe is us, but you know, it's very hard to be in a band forever and to do it well for a long period of time. It's, it, gets, it gets difficult to live like that, you know? Especially like, yeah, 23-year-old George bowling around in the world, playing rock shows every night, jumping off the stage is one thing. I'm still kind of doing that, just less and less. Yeah. But now, you know, you have family involved. You have aspirations outside of music. You do th things like that, you know. I mean, I've got a son yeah. and, and a wife and a house. That, that it, those are important things to me, you know. And the idea of I wouldn't want to go back to 10 months out of the year on the road. I don't, it's not, that's not important to me. Yeah. But I do, but it's also like, I do still want to play. Yeah. And that's, that's not going away. And once in a while, you kind of think it is. And then all of a sudden you're standing at the side of the stage and there's like 10,000 people that want to see you. And you step out there and it all just comes rushing back. Like we've carved this neural pathway through our brains through 12 years of playing music, stage, every night, you know, and it just comes back like that, like a, like a, like a snap, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't know. I, I'm glad we're still doing it. And I'm glad, I hope, hope I still get to do this, this in, in the capacity that we're doing it, you know? And See, all that time in the van <laughs> has set everything up for today so you can do things on your own terms. Yeah. Precisely, and we and yeah, and we're very we're very cognizant of that and uh, appreciative of it as well. You know, I, I'm, I'm happy that I. I mean, me personally, you know, like it, it. I was very very happy to be able to come back to the band, and play because, you know, from the day when I said to everybody I'm going to leave, you know, there was a part of me that thought that might be the end of this. You know what I mean, like. Mm. So for me personally, to be able to think about all the time that we spent doing it and to be able to sit in a room and with my, my friends and still write a tune that we think, you know, that jazzes us all and then we get to go and play it for people <laughs> and they're jazzed. Uh, it's a great, it's a great feeling, you know?